Hello and uh, welcome to the Handy Women channel. I'm your host Geraldine Anello and we are in this segment uh, called What Not To Do. And the purpose of this segment is uh, to inspire all of us out there who are handy women to uh, dare to learn, to dare to make mistakes and know that the best way to learn is through those mistakes. So uh, to show that you're not alone, no matter what happens in the process, I've got lots of guests who are willing to share their best moments uh, learning on the spot. And so today I have Kat Stibley. Hey, Kat. Hi, Geraldine. How are you doing? I am so good. So I'm excited to talk to you again because you did a spotlight for Handy Women's channel. And in that spotlight, you were talking about a paint job you did, which was one of your first handy jobs. And, and you were talking about it was in the basement and uh, it did not go the way you intended originally, although it ended mm. well, because that's how we learn. So can you please share with us that story, the painting Absolutely. job in the basement story? <laughs> Absolutely. So we have uh, it's a, a ranch house, fully finished basement. And there's a, you go down the basement stairs and there's that weird little triangle wall it's not particularly useful for anything, kind of right under the stairs. Uh, and one of my first projects was I really want to do something fun with it. Um, and so I hit on the idea of turning it into kind of a magnetic chalkboard wall. And so they have paint you can use that either, either as magnetic or chalkboard. Um, and I got to set a panel, a real thin, like particle board, I think. And the painting itself went okay. It smells absolutely awful. Definitely paint that outside. Uh, but we got that on the Measuring and cutting it was a challenge, but we got there. Um, the the learning came afterward. So I had, you know, I've had apartments. You know, you paint your apartment sometimes, no big deal. Um, and I knew how to clean up afterward. You take it to the sink, the utility sink. You wash it till it's clear, or wash it till the you know the water runs clear out of the brush, out of the the roller. And so I did that, and I took my rollers over to the over to the sink and. And I ran the water over them, and it wasn't really coming out of the roller the way I wanted. So I grabbed the roller, just like you would with, with any other roller, and I started kind of scrubbing the paint out of it. And there was this moment where my brain went, that doesn't feel right. That's not what paint is supposed to feel like. And I look at my hand, and I am covered in a perfectly flat sheen of this black paint, and water is beating up on the paint, which is not what paint does in my brain. That's, that's odd. Paint doesn't, paint doesn't do that. Why does paint do that? So I go back and I find the box and it's labeled oil-based paint. Having not ever painted, have not knowing there was two kinds of paint at this point, you know, I've only ever worked with what I now know is latex paint, uh, which is water soluble. Oil-based paint is not. So what I have done is coat my hand in this oil-based paint and no amount of water is going to get it off. Well, this is the Google era. So, okay, Google, how do you get oil-based paint off your skin? Mineral spirits. And I look at the wall of chemicals behind me and there's, of course, I don't have mineral spirits because it's my first house. And why would I buy cleaning chemicals? I don't know what to do with. Okay, don't have mineral spirits. I can drive to Lowe's one-handed very carefully, <laughs> but I don't want to do that. It's all right, go back to Google. You know, are there common household ways or their, their tricks for getting this off your skin. Uh, and then what I wound up finding is a set of instructions with uh, oil, salt, and soap. You need an abrasive, you need the soap to bind to the oil and the oil to pull the oil of the paint off your skin. All right, that's plausible. Seems reasonable. It's kind of like how you de-skunk a dog. Um, so I go up to the kitchen and I get my oil and my salt and my, my soap and I dump the oil in my hands, I dump the salt in my hands and soap. And again, it's one of those moments where you, you do it and half a second later you go, don't do that, that's dumb. As I promptly put my hands together into this. <laughs> Whereupon now I have two hands completely covered <laughs> in oil paint. And I can't even tap Google to go, okay, how do I get myself out of this one? Because, of course, this, this hasn't worked. I've just coated my hands in even more oil paint. And now, now I can't even go to the hardware store <laughs> if I want to. Well, got myself into this one. I'm getting myself out. And it did seem to somewhat break it up. Uh, so I figured, all right, well, we'll just we'll keep trying. And about half a thing of oil and about half a thing of soap later, I do eventually manage to get it all off my hands. 
Uh, but yeah, that was uh, you know, read the label on the containers how? of things you're using. Wait, how? How did you get it off over your over time? The oil and and salt did act as an abrasive to pull it off my skin. It just took a lot of rounds of under how the water and scrubbing and scrubbing. How much time are we and talking about here? Twenty thirty minutes of trying, hoping that my housemates who are in the living room watching a movie don't come in and see, of course, the folly of me in the kitchen trying to get paint I should have been wearing gloves for uh, off my hands. <laughs> So not I, the paint job itself went fine, uh, just one of those like. Right, so you carry you carried on with the oil based paint. Yeah. Afterwards, you just use gloves. Yes. That yeah. was well, the that, lesson. Yep. Yeah. Keep and, it keep it off your skin. And that's why we love what not to do stories because yep. that's how you learn, you know. So all of yeah. you out now, there, I, there you go. <laughs> had I read the entire instructions on the package, other than I got to like how to paint with it. Had I read how to clean up afterward, I would have known to have mineral spirits around. I would have known, you know, the whole end-to-end -end process and not just jumped in of, I want to paint the thing. I didn't know how to finish painting the thing. <laughs> so many lessons learned. One, yep. maybe don't use all based. Is that one of the lessons or is that not? No, not at all. Not at all. Just know, know the difference between latex and oil. There, there are some things like chalkboard paint is just, or it was chalkboard or magnetic. I don't remember. One of the two. It's just, it is oil based. If you want that technique, that's what you're going to have to use. Just know that that's what you're using. <laughs> so how do you decide which one you're going to use? Uh, it, it depends on what you're looking to do. So if it's standard wall paint, it's going to be usually latex. If it's, I think it's magnetic. I'd have to Google now. I just is oil-based. So if you want a magnetic wall, that's what you're using. So two lessons. One, when using oil-based oil, <laughs> oil-based paint, make sure you have minerals spirits yep spirits with you and b always read all the instruction before starting yep well there you go a little bit smarter thanks to that what not to do story because that's how we learn best thank you for making that mistake for me and every other <laughs> You're welcome. woman out there thank you for sharing it daringly with us i love that that takes courage and it's amazing thanks cat <laughs> bye bye